Um, this time, well, this week we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day, so we hope you have a very lucky week. Uh, first of all, to start a little bit about this, we would like to ask, uh, do you believe in St. Patrick, any of you? Like, do you have any uh, love superstitions or any practices, something like that about St. Patrick? If you can share with us. Uh, also on Zoom, you can open your microphone here uh, if you, you can share with us, if you have any of those experiences. We have one that you have a supervision. Yeah, you have to wear green or else you get pinched. All right, here they are telling us they, they were green. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. For example, in, in my country, I also uh, I'm used to, well, it's not, we don't celebrate St. Patrick's, but it's related with love. It's especially on New Year. So we go around the block like at, at 12 a.m., like at midnight on New Year. We go around the block with a uh, like with luggage, you know, with a bag, like running, running around the, the block. And that says it's to have the luck of traveling this, that year. So, yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. So, yeah, and that will be, thanks for sharing. Anyone? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. okay, that's a good it's coming, it's coming up. <laughs> no, it's no, it's coming. It's coming. Okay, it's fine. So, yeah, right now I'm going to pass the mic for Marcella, to Marcella for someone else. Happy Tuesday. Um, thank you for being here again. Thank you, Zoom, for joining us. Um, announcements, we this week are presenting about Italy, and it happened that we do have many cities in Italy that students can study abroad. So I will be adding um, the links in the chat for those students that want to study abroad in Italy once it is safe. Keep in mind that right now we're in the middle of the pandemic. The majority of Europe, including Italy, is in level four. So we're not allowing students to study abroad if it doesn't change soon for summer and fall but just that's an option we do have different cities in italy so today let me lower the mic down so oh maybe my our speakers are taller than me they will be okay so i don't want to mess up with that but um we i'm very proud to have a, two presenters um as you know i mentioned we're in the middle of the pandemic last semester we only any guess how many students we have last semester studying abroad just chat it out, or open your mic, or... Okay. We have three students, and two of those students are here. They're gonna uh, share their experience that um, they spent a whole semester in Italy. So I'm very happy that they had the chance to study abroad while they're in the pandemic and went through all the turbulence of the pandemic. But I'm sure they had a blast of what I have heard from them. So we're very happy to have Jolina, and Gursiram here to tell us about their study abroad experience. Please come. Thank you, Marcella. And you too. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, hi, everyone. I want to take it that second. May I interrupt you? Speak very loudly and stand up to the microphone. Can you hear us? I want to be able to hear you. Got you. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes? Okay. Cool. Closer. Okay. Well, so my name is Jolina. I'm Chris Simran. And last semester we had the opportunity to study abroad in Verona, Italy um, with USAC. So we were very excited and very happy that we got to actually go last semester because there was some problems you know with the pandemic um i know a couple of my study abroad had got canceled a semester before that a couple semesters before that so i was really lucky to be able to go last semester um so yeah let's get started <laughs> okay cool Oops. okay Yes. Oh, I see. Um, I'll just share one of the reasons why I chose Verona. So I've always wanted to go to Italy. That was one of my like top choices. And um, Verona, honestly, I just looked up pictures of it and I thought it looked pretty. Um, and as we'll talk about like in the next slide, uh, Verona is actually the setting for Shakespeare's story, Romeo and Juliet. 
And so I thought, why not choose Verona? It seems romantic and pretty. So, yes. Um, I know I've always wanted to study abroad too. I've always been really interested and very, um, you know, wanting to get to know other cultures and see what people are about, you know, around the world. So I've always wanted to do that since I was in high school. And um, I actually was supposed to study abroad in Alicante, Spain, but because of the pandemic, there was a little bit of issues. So my option was to go to Verona, Italy. So, and I'm very happy I did. I do not regret it one bit because I had the best time in Verona, Italy. It's beautiful. So, just a little bit about Verona. Um, long ago, there was a lot of rulers that ruled um, on different parts of Italy. Um, and one of the main ones, they had like these buildings and actually like, this is actually a funeral, like a, they're, that's where they're buried. Yeah. They're, yeah. Their family, their tombs are literally right behind those gates for the De La Scala family. And um, so it was really interesting. We got to see that. And they're, where it means, De La Scala means like uh, ladder. ladder, the ladder. So there's um, ladders all along the gate right there, which is really cool. Um, again, like we said, it's a setting for Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. So, you know, it's known a lot for a city of love and romance, and which is really cool. The city is surrounded by the Adige River. Um, you'll see a couple of pictures. There's a long river where you walk across a lot of bridges, and it's really beautiful. Um, there's a lot of monuments all around Verona that date back all the way to the Middle Ages that are still in really good shape. Um, that's sometimes what they are really known for in Verona. Um, here are just some of the photos from our walking tour. So the first two days that we were there, uh, USAC took us on walking tours around Verona to get used to the city. And there was definitely a lot of walking. Um, taking the bus and walking is like really just the main mode of transportation there, which is completely different than here um, where you drive everywhere, you know? So um, getting used to the walking was definitely a challenge, but everywhere you look, it's just super beautiful. So it didn't take too long. And then that photo right there, you can also see the DJ River flowing through. Yeah, yeah. so we did a lot of walking. Um, let's see. So this is just an overview of Italy, just some things that we learned. Um, you know, it's in Europe, so the currency, we use euros, we had to, you know, exchange our money, well, ATMs, which is all around that we found, which was easy to get. Um, the government there is a Democratic Republic. I know they just re-elected their president, so he's in his 80s, and they just re-elected um, re him. So um, that's that. A little bit of history that about Italy that we learned was that um, before it was unified in in 1948, it was broken to many city-states that had a bunch of rulers and kingdoms. And because it was unified so early, it's you know a really early unified state uh, country. And uh, one thing that's really cool was that it's the home, home of the Renaissance era. And um, so it's really cool to learn about because you know we learned about it here, but we actually got to be there where it all started and began. Um, and to go back to the broken city-states, once it, it was unified, Italy is still very regional, regionalized, so there's a lot of regions, it's broken up into many regions, which has many cities within those regions. Um, and one thing that is very known over there is that although they're a unified in the country, they're not very unified as like a nation. So. They're more, as the say goes, and forgive me if I don't pronounce it correctly, <laughs> but uh, campanilismo, and which means is that they're very loyal to their bell tower or very loyal to where um, their village or where they're from, their little town, more as in a nation as a whole. And that's just something that we learned in our Italian culture class. Um, so just some fun facts about Italy. Um, again, going back to the regionalization of Italy itself, every region has their own dialect, um, which makes it very hard for, you know, different parts of Italians to connect. Um, for example, like they have different TV channels in different regions because the dialects are so different that sometimes it makes it hard for people in northern Italy to even understand people in southern Italy. 
Um, their most popular sport is soccer, um, also basketball and volleyball, um, but soccer and then Formula One racing and um, cycling as well are like the very, the biggest uh, sports in Italy. Um, there are also no Italian fast food restaurants. The only ones we really saw were McDonald's or there were like a couple Subways. But yeah, that's other, American. But that, that is, yeah, that's cool. American fast food that has like transferred over to Italy, but there's no um, Italian fast food chains. Um, Italians have a lot of conversations in only their gestures, and most people know this one. Um, but this specifically is actually very like aggressive, and you don't usually most people say it to like just to use it, but it's normally if you're mad at someone or you know you're frustrated or annoyed, you use this. So um, again, public transportation is very common. So using buses, I got a bus. Did you get a bus pass? Yeah, we bought bus passes, even though we were only there for three months. Um, getting a bus pass was necessary because you use that all the time. Um, eating time differences. Um, they very they eat dinner very late in comparison to here. So um, from I want to say around like one p.m. to four p.m. There's really nothing open, no restaurants or anything. Um, stores too. Yeah, even some stores will like even close because you know that's just the time that you're supposed to be home relaxing. Um, and then restaurants will open up again around like 6 p.m. for dinner time. But I would say like 8 p.m. is normally the time that you would go to dinner. Um, and their meals always are very long, very relaxed. Um, you take your time eating and you enjoy the food um, rather than, you know, rushing through and trying to get out of there as fast as you can. Um, and that would also tie into the importance on human relationships. So, you know, food is one way that Italians connect with one another. And so um, they're really big on, you know, forming those connections. And I know COVID really um, affected that whole part of it because Italians are so friendly with one another. Um, and then Italian culture also comes from a vulgar version of Latin. Um, that's just an interesting fact. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just to mention too, since the dialects kind of cause a conflict with the, between communicating from one end of Italy to the other, the gestures have become like a universal language that anyone can use, and that's why they can have full conversation and just using their hands, which is really cool to learn about. Oh, here's just some photos, oh. um, just highlighting the fact that you know Romeo and Julia is very big there, and that's me yeah, with <laughs> the statue of Julia, <laughs> which touching her breast is actually a form of good luck. So that's actually ties into the whole St. Patrick's Day thing. Um, and then on that left hand photo, um, that little box there, you can write a letter to Juliet and there's like little secretaries. Um, anybody can actually volunteer. They even like had us if we wanted to volunteer, we could go and respond to some of these letters that people write um, from all over the world. And they write to Juliet to try and get some help or clarity in their love life. These are some other pictures too from views in Verona. Um, the middle one that's on top of the bell tower that they have there and when evening me and my friends we went up there and you could see a whole range of Verona how far it goes and you can't even see the distance because it goes so far out but it's a really cool view. Again there's a castle in this bottom left hand corner um, and that's um, is it the Castel de San Pietro? San Pietro yeah. yeah. And at the top, it's really cool. It's a long way up the stairs, but it, once you get there, it's beautiful. And that's a view on the top left hand corner from the castle, which is really cool, especially at night. And pictures don't do justice when you try that. Um, one, there was a bunch of festivals in uh, Verona. Uh, a lot of times we didn't get to make most of them because we were always out of town traveling, doing some things, but. Um, one time I got to go to the wine festival that they held in Verona and there was a bunch of booths all over the town square um, in, uh, in the middle of Verona with just a bunch of wines from all over Italy and you could buy these tokens and get these, get your own glass and you just give the tokens to each booth and they pour you a little glass of their wine. So it was really cool. And 
Um, some more uh, culture facts about Verona itself. So Verona is part of the Veneto region of Italy, which is up in the north. So near Venice, uh, there's a lot of German influence uh, just because Verona is so close to the borders of Switzerland and Austria, um, which obviously also have a lot of German influence. And so there are some places further up in the north, like in the Lombardy region, um, that actually speak more German than they do speak Italian just because of that heavy German influence. Um, and then some culture shock moments that we experienced is number one, always dressing nicely. <laughs> Italians are always dressed to the nines. They are always looking good. There was never a person that I saw wearing like, you know, just leggings or sweatsuits, you know, like I feel like or the fashion here in America is like very relaxed. I remember and, they yeah. told us too that you can have your life all messed up, you know, your room's messy and everything, but you never show that. So that's why they dress. The part of the reason why is they show that, you know, they're always put together, no matter if their life is all messy, as long as you look good, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, along with that, it is funny, though, thinking that, you know, they dress so nicely, but they do live a very, like, laid back lifestyle or la dolce vita. So just living the sweet life, taking their time. They're never, you never see them in a rush anywhere. Um, you know, they, they just really take their time and they try to enjoy every moment, which again, going back to like things like eating long meals, that's because they're enjoying their food and they're really taking time yeah. with that. Um, Italians are also sensitive to weather changes. Um, and we got to experience this firsthand in our classrooms. We would be sweating in class and asking them to turn on the AC, but just them feeling that cold draft, they'd be like, <laughs> I'm getting a headache, or <laughs> are you guys sure? Like, my shoulders are hurting, so. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was very interesting seeing that sensitivity. Um, and then also in the up in the north, there's not a lot of spicy food options. I know here, especially in the valley, I feel like, you know, with all the Mexican cuisine, it's like, I'm pretty used to eating spicy foods, um, but the North doesn't really have a lot of, um, you know, spice in their food. That, I would say that's more Southern Italy. So that's like kind of difference. Of the um, and then here's just some traditional Veronese food, um, risotto, bandoro, polenta, tiramisu, and gnocchi. Um, that top photo is risotto. Um, that was like one of my favorite things that I got to try there. Um, bandoro is a, bandoro and tiramisu are both like desserts. And bandoro comes out mostly, you would see it everywhere in grocery stores or at um, different places where they come out mostly in the holiday, during holiday season. So a lot of people usually get, you know, big cakes or bread, sorry. Um, these are just pictures of some of the Italian foods we got to eat that we got to capture. We didn't get to capture everything, but these are some of the ones that we did. You know, gelato, very popular. You don't, you'll never have gelato like you have gelato in Italy. So there are um, sandwiches, pastas, different kinds of pastas, and there's no such thing as fettuccine. And so you'll not find that in Italy. Um, huh? Oh yeah, uh, Alfredo. Sorry, Alfredo sauce. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just. We need imagine. Yeah, all kinds. Um, here are just some foods from other countries because even though we did study abroad in Italy, we also had the pleasure of being able to travel to other countries as well. Um, so there's here are some foods from other countries. Um, you can see on the top right. Photo. Um, it's like how a dessert and a churro. Sorry? How many other countries? Oh, we're going to share how many oh, we did too. I don't, yeah, I don't remember, but I we went to. A lot. Yeah, I kind of name them off the top of my head right yeah. now. We do have a list though, so we'll, we'll show, show you guys. guys. <laughs> but that top right photo is ice cream filled in a churro. I got that in Prague and it was delicious. <laughs> Uh, the middle one, I ate that in Austria. Uh, that is a schnitzel, and it had some jam, and you spread the berry jam. Oh my gosh, it was it's delicious. Um, and then also, too, the, what looks kind of like macaroni and cheese. It's not, but it kind of had a similar taste. I forgot the name of it, but that was also delicious, and I also ate that in Austria. I had, um, what else is there? Oh, I think those are your pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, paella, I had that in Spain, which is yeah. in the middle right there. That was delicious as well. 
Um, here are some of the classes that we personally took. Um, Italian language, Italian culture, fashion, merchandising, and marketing, and then Renaissance art and architecture. And then um, there were a couple other classes that they did offer that we both did not take, so we didn't mention them. But for example, those would be like international marketing or intercultural communications. And then also there's so, there were also optional one unit classes that you did have to um, pay for. So the food and wine business study and the Italian cuisine class. Um, I took the food and wine business study, but I don't believe you took any. I didn't think I, I didn't take any of the optional one unit classes, but I did take the language, culture, and renaissance art. I took both the part one and part two of language. Um, um, how is your language now? You know, I wish I could say it was exactly how it was when I learned it because I learned a lot, but coming back, I don't get to speak a lot of Italian to people, so um, I feel like I have to be in the moment again talking to Italians. It really did help though, and I guess this kind of ties into wanting to thank um, Liz Shields, who's here, because because we took Italian language courses, we got offered the grant by her family, um, so we do want to give a shout out and a big thank you, because it helped, it, it helped me so much, the grant. <laughs> Um, to be able to really have a great experience in Italy. And so, yeah, it was really helpful to take the language classes because not only you have like the chow and just common things, but I got to learn how to, you know, ask for different things at restaurants or ask to try on clothes and, you know, really try to talk to people who didn't know a lot of English and like vice versa. So it was really fun to um, interact that way with locals. Um, here are some of the field trips that USAC offered. Um, so these were free, free field trips that we got to go on through uh, the program. So Lake Garda is that first field trip that we went on the first weekend we were here, um, which was honestly, it was so nice. Lake Garda isn't a very famous lake in Italy. Lake Como is usually the one that people tend to go to, but Lake Garda is actually the biggest lake in Italy, and so it was so nice to be able to go there. We went to Sermione, um, and it was just really beautiful having that little lake day. We also went to Venice, and we did a walking tour in Venice through USAC, and then we also got to go to a Veneto a winery, um, a local winery in the Veneto region, so that was also really nice, and we got to try some uh, <coughs> from that specific winery. Yeah. These are just a couple of photos, and Lake Garda, there is a big, huge castle in the middle, which is really cool. Um, you know, uh, especially we got to go. On a, I got to go on a boat ride, and it went under a couple of the bridges there. So that was really beautiful to see. Um, that's just me and some of our other USAC friends that we met. This one, these are pictures from Venice. Um, while we were there in Venice, it did flood a little bit. So they had to put up all the boards and all the walking stuff that everyone had to walk in certain paths to get across because it was flooding. Um, but so that was really cool to experience. We got to go into um, uh, art, uh, it's like a museum. Um, yeah, yeah. And that was really beautiful to see all of the art there. And I also got to go on a gondola ride, which was, you know, you have to do that. <laughs> Um, these are from the Veneto winery that we got to go to. We went through a tour and then we also got to try two different wines there. And what was cool was that USAC had a couple of uh, Italian students that we got to meet um, at the university that we attended. And on this field trip, they were able to come with us. So in the picture, we um, with me and some of my friends, you might not be able to tell, obviously, but there's two Italian students that were able to attend with us, um, you know, that we're still in contact with today, which is really cool. Um, and then these are some of the class field trips. So it was really nice because the classes that we took there, a lot of the teachers did take us on field trips that were super easy to get to. We honestly walked to most of them. Um, but I mean, we have a list right there and some of the photos. So one of them is the Basilica de San Zeno, which is actually the oldest church in, um, in Verona. And so we went there for our Renaissance class and we talked about, you know, the architecture and the different types of frescoes that were painted on the walls. Um, and then we went to also the Rendoro olive oil factory. Um, and that was a local olive oil factory in, um, 
the Veneto region. And so we got to see how they make the olive oil, where the olives come from, and they gave us a whole tour of the entire factory. Same with the Tortellini factory, which was really cool. We got to see them, you know, stamping out all of the um, little tortellinis and raviolis, and they even gave us some to take home uh, to our apartments there and, you know, be able to make our own. And then we also went to the Museo de Castel Vecchio. So Castel Vecchio is um, the old castle in Verona. And um, there is a museum inside of there filled with different, a lot of different types of art from throughout the ages and a lot from the Renaissance as well. And so our Renaissance class professor took us there. And yes, you can see me very, being very studious and presenting my art that I got <laughs> to present in class. Um, these are pictures of, from um, the Basilica, yes, um, just, you know, the, picture, the middle picture on the bottom shows like the process they got to um, unbury and kind of, I don't know. They, they excavated, excavated one of the tombs of, I, think, I believe it was the priest of that church at the time. Mm -hmm. So those are, they actually did that, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, this is, these are photos from the Juicy Gardens. Um, these are gardens that are there. It's a Renaissance garden that is in Verona, uh, which I honestly had no idea about. But it was like one of the most beautiful places that we ever got to go on a field trip, in my opinion. Um, it was just it was amazing. The view from the top was like unbelievable. And so it was like really nice that we got to go there. And then these are some photos from that olive oil factory. And they actually, <laughs> Redoro, the company, um, we were looking at some of those boxes down there and they had like shipping labels printed on them. And some of them were going to like home goods in Arizona and other states in America. So I think if we might look hard enough in one of the home goods or marshals, we might find it. a bottle <laughs> of them. But yeah, so then, and then you can also see the olive oil being poured out into that giant um, canister. Um, these were inside some photos of the art from inside the Museo de Castel Vecchio. So like Marcella mentioned, there was only three of us who got to study abroad last semester, uh, which we're very grateful for. Um, and we had a kind of different experience, I would think, because of the pandemic. You know, um, they were very strict, especially being in Italy. I know Italy was one of the countries that got hit the hardest. And talking to a lot of locals, they shared with us how hard that it hit them because of how social they are. So that really impacted them um, with their human interactions. And then also just a lot of their businesses, since their family owned a lot of times, that a lot of businesses had to shut down. And so they were used to seeing businesses shut down. and so. It was, um, pretty interesting to really see how that affected them and as well, you know, we had vaccinations um, anywhere we went, we had to show our vaccinations, restaurants, bars, museums, cathedrals, everywhere. Um, we also had to take our COVID test before we got there and as we left as well. And yeah, and also too, when we first got there, our uh, program advisors have mentioned how hard it probably was going to be for us to want to travel outside of Italy because the travel guidelines were always changing. But thankfully, we did get to experience and got to travel to other European countries while we were there. So these are a list of all the places that I got to go to. I don't have a necessarily favorite trip. It's kind of hard to narrow down to just one because all of them were all so different. And I didn't realize how many places I went to until I started listing them. And, you know, it's really hard to just choose one. And, you know, um, so here's some of the places I went. The ones that don't have the country name, those are all from Italy. So, you know, I got to Florence, Milan, Venice, Bergamo, Brescia, where else? Rome, Luca, Pisa, and Catania, which is in Sicily. And other countries that I got to visit was, um, Austria, Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, France, and Spain, which was, I had a couple extra days after our program ended before my 90 days ended up, uh, ended. So I got to travel to Spain for a couple days afterwards. So yeah, I had a lot of, you know, in Austria, when we went, a group of us went, that was one of the most incredible things that I got to experience. We went all the way on top of the, in Innsbruck, Austria, at the top of the Austrian Alps. We went on a big mountain and got to, hike along the 
mount in there. And so I have some pictures. This, uh, these, these pictures range from Milan. You know, we got to go to a soccer game, which was crazy. It was so cool. The fans are so energetic, so loud, so so much full like pride, and it was cool. I got to swim in the Mediterranean because I got to go to Cinque Terre, and we got to go on a boat right there, which was absolutely breathtaking. Um, I got to see the statue of David in Florence, which was really awesome. And these are some other photos. You can see where we were on top of the mountain, me and my roommate, me and the group of uh, students I got to go, and just some pictures of the view, which was incredible. It didn't, it didn't even look real. Um, some other places, Brescia, I got to go to a um, car museum for where they did the um, mil I forgot the name, I'm sorry, I can't think of it on the top of my head. Um, but they did a car racing. I had to go to Bergamo, just some pictures. Um, let's see. Germany, I got to go to the BMW Museum. Uh, I went to Paris, France, and there's a picture of us holding my friend Jalen. Um, so, yeah, those are some pictures. Got to see the Eiffel Tower. Um, there's some pictures. We got to go to Rome and, and some pictures in Amsterdam as well. And me and my roommate got to go to Pisa, see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, and some pictures of me and my friends. On our last trip, we got to go to uh, Sicily. So we went to Catania and a nearby city. So that was really cool seeing going from the north to the south. Um, so these are all of the trips that I went to. And again, I also don't have a favorite trip just because there's no way for me to narrow down like my absolute favorite place. Um, I got to go to a lot of Italian cities and I really didn't realize it again until I started listing them all out. Um, so I, went, I was able to go to Florence, Milan, Venice. And while we were in Venice, I also went to Murano and Burano, which are two little islands just right off of Venice. Um, where they actually have all of the glass factories. So all of the glass blowing and stuff that they do actually happens in Burano and Murano. Um, and then I also was able to go to Bolzano, which is um, in the Italian Alps. It's the beginning of the Italian Alps. I went to Lake Garda and Lake Como, uh, Vallejo San Mincio, which is a very small city, but they're known for their uh, tortellini, which is why we went there. Um, Piacenza, where my uncle actually lives, um, Rome and Bologna, which the food in Bologna was amazing, it was unbelievable. Um, and then some other European cities and countries that I went to was Vienna, Austria, Amsterdam, Netherlands, and I also went to Zanzenschans in the Netherlands, which is where all those windmills are, uh, Budapest, and Prague. And then here are some photos. So these are photos from Lake Garda and from Lake Como. Um, Lake Como is a completely different vibe than Lake Garda, but both of them were um, extremely beautiful. When we were in Lake Como, we actually went to Bellagio, uh, which is a little island in Lake Como. Um, and that was like super nice walking around. And there were actually a lot of tourists there as well. So there was a lot of English, which was very interesting hearing English while we were there, but it was nice, a little comforting. And then these are some photos just from around um, Italy. Um, actually on the top left photo, there's actually a movie being filmed in Verona. And one of our classmates uh, snuck in and wanted <laughs> to be an extra in the movie. So um, we're hoping to see her whenever I that would be the name. Out. It's going to be on Netflix. I think it's called Love in the Villa, I believe. But it takes place in Verona, so um, that was really cool seeing that movie being filmed there. And then um, I actually went wine tasting in Tuscany with a group of girls. That was amazing. My first wine tasting ever, and it was in Tuscany. So I'm very lucky to be able to say that. Um, and then there's also a photo inside a glass factory when we were in uh, Murano and we got to make some glass jewelry, which was really nice. I think, yeah. And then here are some photos from Milan. Um, again, I also went to the Milan game. And that was really, really fun. I have some pictures of food that we ate in Bologna. Um, again, I think Bologna was one of my favorite places to eat. They just had 
such a good variety of food and everything was amazing. And then these are some photos from other countries. So we have um, Amsterdam, Vienna, Budapest, and Prague. Um, Prague was our very, the very last trip that I took, but um, I want to say, I would say that that's my favorite European city outside of Italy that I got to go to just because it was so beautiful. Really? Um, and then these are some photos. I actually took a train all the way to Vienna. Um, and so the train ride back, it was around fall time. It was absolutely beautiful. We rode through the Italian Alps. It was an eight hour train. So it was really, really long, but it was totally worth it. Just to add something to talking about train rides, I had never rode a train until I got to Italy. So it was really cool. I, I love the trains. Like just taking a train anywhere we went, the views with the big, huge windows. Some trains were nicer than others, just depending on what you were paying. But um, it was all just to be so beautiful, just getting to see everything. And I absolutely love taking the trains. And yeah, I wish I could do that more here. Oh, and then these are some photos from the trip. So me and Jolena didn't get the opportunity to take too many trips together, but one of the trips that we did do together was Rome, and that was super nice. That was awesome. Yeah, we got to go to the Vatican City as well and did a whole tour inside the Vatican City, which um, that was really, really interesting. And I also ate carbonara there. That was the best carbonara that I've ever eaten. <laughs> it was very good. Yeah, Rome was so cool. Everything was so big, and everywhere you go in Italy, you're like, how did they build these things that are still here today? It was just crazy and just uh, no words to describe. Um, we got to go into the Colosseum, which was really cool. Um, I think Rome was really cool to see, especially it being the capital of Italy. Um, just everything. We got to see a bunch of stuff that we learned about in our Italian Renaissance class, which is really cool. And yeah. <coughs> Oh, these are just some photos that I added of all of the coffee that I drink. Um, I drink a lot of cappuccinos and a lot of espresso. Um, and it was just, honestly, I definitely miss the lattes, you know, back here. But um, the cappuccinos there are just amazing. And they're also available, like, literally any time of day, which is super nice. Like, even after dinner, you know, they'd be like, okay, do you guys want some espresso? Right. Um, and so, yeah, the cappuccinos were amazing. That's mostly what their breakfast consisted of. You never really find, oh, eggs and things like that. You always have, like, a piece, like a croissant or, and some coffee. And which was really cool and absolutely delicious. We even had uh, at our university little like, like coffee machines and you just put in the 50 cent euro and you get a little cappuccino and let me tell you that saved a lot of us and especially in our long hour classes. And then we also had the amazing opportunity to um, experience Christmas time while we were abroad, which I think was my like probably one of my most favorite things that I got to experience. Um, Christmas festivals are very, very big in Europe. And so uh, Verona even had their own like Christmas markets. And once they opened, I think I went there almost every single night because they had like food, uh, food booths and, you know, wine booths and little Christmas ornaments to buy. And so um, those are just some photos of us with our friends there, but. Yeah, and since it was, um, since uh, Verona was in, located in Northern Italy, a lot of uh, German, a lot of Germans actually came down and a lot of the booths were German, you know, people selling their ornaments or food. So it was a lot of German food actually that were at the Christmas markets. Um, they also had an ice skating rink. It was really small, but you know, still kind of cool. You know, go ice skating. Um, got to do that, and the whole Christmas, with the the lights and everything. They really decorate the city when it comes to like holidays, and that's really cool. Because even in other cities too, you'll see lights hanging up everywhere that go on at night, um, and it's really pretty. Grazie. 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 So yeah, that's us. Um, I don't know if we have any more time. Do we have time yes. to do that? Oh, no. Yeah, so we do have time. Oh, we ha added um, you know, a little questionnaire. Okay, you check it. Do they have questions? Oh, yeah. Do you guys have any questions or comments? Liz wrote a note for you. Do you want to read it on that? And then stop sharing. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, did you have a question? You said. Does one still have to cover oneself when entering the Vatican? Oh yeah. So we had to wear. Um, they they even told us um, that you had to like wear like conservative clothes. So like obviously like no midriff showing. Um, no. I mean you could wear like short sleeve shirts. By the time we went, it was cold. But um, yeah, no like no short skirts or anything like that. Um, and it was actually really interesting going into the Vatican. It's almost like an airport. Like they have like a security thing that you had to go through. Um, just to make sure, obviously, you aren't bringing anything in there. But yeah, you do have to dress. No, no head covering. No, no, no head covering. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good to you know. This head said, if you want to practice your singing Italian, you can go to the Sierra Net House because he goes to Italy a lot. Oh, okay. I've never been there, but I know where that is. I don't know where that's at, but that's I do. I want to get more into Italian yeah. language. It's beautiful. Uh, it's it's a romantic language, if I'm not mistaken, um, along with Spanish and, and French. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, any other questions or comments in Zoom? I, I, I wanted to say I'm very glad that you had the opportunity to go to Italy. It's one of my favorite countries, for sure. And um, I would mention the Italian. You know, Joan uh, Sorrenti at uh, Sierra Nuthouse sometimes has lessons in Italian that she puts on. Oh, cute. Okay. That might be worth looking into. Yeah. 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 I definitely feel like I want to stay in touch with that, like, Italian mm -hmm. side. You know, it was just so... Um, it, we were just so lucky to be able to like experience that and I feel like we both really tried our best to like immerse ourselves in the culture and yeah. actually you know learn Italian and speak it because it's very easy to just you know try just use English and get by but I feel like it's a very different experience to actually like learn the language and try to be as Italian as possible. And everyone that we met, all the locals who knew, you know, I, I, we were pretty obvious that we were American most of the time, but a lot of times they were trying to like go along and help us, as, you know, trying the best as we can, give us tips, like everyone was so helpful and welcoming to want to, you know, uh, help us in some way, because it was honestly, you could get by speaking English pretty much everywhere, it's so common in Italy, which was really shocking, but um, getting to have people, local people, local Italians just, you know, want to hear your Italian and help you with it. And, you know, that was really cool. Uh, and all of the students that we met, like a bunch yeah. of friends that we met, you know, they wanted to practice their English. We wanted to practice our Italian. So we got to, you know, go back and forth, which is, it was awesome. <laughs> yes. Your uh, status as students now? What are you majoring in and so on? Okay. And where is um, I'm actually a nursing student, so um, going to study abroad, it was more so I did have a semester um, in between starting the program, so I just started the nursing program here, um, this is my first semester, but last semester I did have that free um, time before it started, and I've always wanted to study abroad, and I thought, why not? This is the perfect time. And so, um, none of the classes that I took really had anything to do with nursing at all, but I've always been interested in art, and so, like, the Renaissance class was amazing, and I've also really liked history, and learning Italian history was, um, mm -hmm. it was really interesting. The, those two were, like, two of my favorite classes that I took while I was there. Yeah. For me, I'm an English major. I'm graduating this May, so, but um, I'm also, uh, uh, I'm minoring in psychology as well. Uh, but So none of these classes ex really had to do with my major as well, but because my day, uh, my, my advisors, Professor Jenkins, give me a big shout out, she really was wanting me to study abroad. She really wanted me to get this experience. So she was like, we're going to make it work. We're going to fit these classes as long as, you know, art and some kind of writing, then you're good. And so, you know, she really helped me with that. And I got to take the language courses. I taught, took both part one and two on the Renaissance class, which is, I was so fascinated because I just thought it was so cool because, you know, we learned about the Renaissance here 
um, when we were younger in history classes, but then actually being there, and then like this is where it started. You're like, oh my gosh, and you get to see like all these sculptures and all these uh, paintings and everything. It was it was like an unreal experience that I got to have. Um, and I also took the Italian culture class, which honestly really helped too because it's not the same. We have a lot of similarities. You learn about that, you know, like. You're going to another country and they have a whole different kind of culture, but you get to see how similar we are to one another. But as well, there is a lot of cultural differences there. You know, um, well, Italians times, they kind of keep to them, like speaking low, not being so like out there, like broad, you know, like um, especially at restaurants and kind of they would say kind of like the American way, you know, um, and just different things about the culture, the way they dress. Uh, we also learned too that, you know, on our first day, they, they told us like, oh, the wet, hair. the wet hair, you don't go outside with your wet hair. You don't wear white socks, never wear white socks. That's just killing your fashion. Like that's just, that's what they told us. So um, things like that, it was just, you see these little differences, the gestures. I didn't know about how many, I knew some of the gestures, but you know, I didn't realize how they really do use that as communication, especially from the north and the south, just different parts, especially because of the dialect. Um, I thought that was so cool. You know, we got to learn uh, different uh, gestures, you know, like this, perfecto. Um, you know, just little things. It was really cool learning about the Italian culture and their, the history of Italy itself um, within those classes. So I had a great time. It was. It was something that I you can't expect. You can have expectations for studying abroad, but once you get there, it's nothing like that. It goes above and beyond and everything. Yeah. Do the men still pinch the girls? <laughs> no, but they did talk about that they in did. our Italian culture. Yeah, so I remember um, our Italian culture professor did say, she was like, if there are any men that are like too forward, yeah. just like ignore them or like tell them this because I mean, I would say there were some men that were like yeah. very forward, but they, I never got pinched, so yeah. that's good. <laughs> a lot of times you, well, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, a lot of times you're walking on the streets and like you hear people honking their horns a lot, yeah. which is really common, or you hear just like different words that you would hear in Italian, like walking on the streets, but it wasn't super, something to be very like scared or like, mm -hmm. you know, like uncomfortable about too much. Um, but yeah, they did tell us about that, um, how Italian men can be very straightforward, very confident in themselves, mm -hmm. and, which was funny to experience. <laughs> we don't have any other questions. I know you have some more questions oh. that you want to ask the audience. Do you want to share? Oh, yeah. Do you, oh, okay, yeah. Is there anybody more? Okay. Yeah, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Go ahead and share your screen. Well, <laughs> what Shakespeare play was based in Verona? Anyone? Yeah, yes. Romeo and Juliet. Cool. Yeah. Oh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah. See. Right. And then, um, what is one of the most popular sports in Italy? Soccer. Yeah. Soccer. Soccer. Or Italian. Calcio. Calcio. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you that soccer game was one of was the best kind of sports game I've ever been to. You see people in the what were they called? They were like this whole section of fans. They threw smoke bombs. They had flags everywhere. They also warned us not to sit in that area, which we didn't. But mm -hmm. they really go hard for their team. They, that was so cool. It was really cultural. Is soccer? Yeah, it's soccer. It's or Italian. <laughs> About the trash uh, true or false? Do you guys believe it's Italy is a very unified country? True. 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 It is unified, but not really as a nation. We learned, like, so we learned that Italy is very regionalized. So they take more loyalty into their region or to their campanilissimo. You know, loyalty to their to their bell tower, to where you know from. A lot of times. The north and the south kind of have they they have beef a little bit, you know. They, <laughs> and that is what we learned too, and we got to kind of experience that firsthand as well. And then, what is a popular flavor in Italy that is very uncommon here in America? Any ideas? Anyone on a Zoom? Hint. A hint. Oh wait, mint. No, I said. It. Oh, a hint? It's, it's not a, chocolate. Yeah. It's, uh, what would be a hint? It's green. 
pistachio. Yeah, there you go, pistachio. Or in Italian, pistachio. Pistachio is how you would say it in pistachio, or in Italian. But um, yeah, pistachio is a very, very common flavor in Italy. Um, it's one of the, their favorite flavors. Is And I learned too that a majority of pistachios come from Sicily because they, they, I don't know, I don't remember the reason why, but majority of pistachios come from Sicily in Italy. And I think that is all. Well, that was it again. Um, <laughs> grazie. <laughs> grazie. There's nothing left. That's another ministry. <laughs> thank you, Julia <laughs> and Gurseram. You guys oh, did a great job. Thank you. It was <laughs> great to hear more about your experience. I know that we have the welcome back, but it's great uh, to see all your pictures. So for, let's take a traditional picture for coffee hour. So it's your time to open your camera and let's take the traditional picture of coffee hour with the speaker. So if you could um, go in the front and let's take a picture. Do you guys want to be part of the picture? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so uh, one of you go in the other side so and you want to stay here. So the people in Zoom, I say go too. Okay, there we go. One. Two, uh, and three. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you to everyone that joined us today in Zoom. Keep in mind that if you don't come usually to coffee hour, the past presentations are in the website. I must not put the website right now. But thank you for joining us and see you next week.